Recreating a human using CGI has always been a complicated task, as the human body is something we all know intimately. We know exactly how it moves, looks, reacts, and any slight variation we see is instantly recognizable and therefore breaks the illusion. The process of recreating human skin has come a long way. Since the 1992 film Death Becomes Her produced the first software to recreate human skin, and the 1999 film Fight Club produced the first photorealistic close-up rendering of a human face, and then continued to evolve with Brad Pitt in Benjamin Button in 2008, Jeff Bridges in the 2010 film Tron Legacy, Arnold Schwarzenegger in the 2015 film Terminator Genesis, and Peter Cushing in the 2016 film Rogue One. But even though the VFX industry has been perfecting 3D scans, motion capture, rigging, and animation, it has never quite managed to get a CG human to look 100% real. This is until Weta Digital and the 2019 film Alita Battle Angel. The main reason CG humans have failed to fool us in the past is that human skin is an incredibly difficult thing to replicate. Human skin is highly detailed, complex, and ever-changing, and this is what has made it impossible to digitally reproduce convincingly. It isn't just a protective external layer on our bodies like the paint on your car. It's our body's largest organ. It moves when the muscles or fat beneath it move, but it also moves of its own accord to adjust to temperature changes. It has different thicknesses and textures depending on its location on your body and exposure to the elements. It doesn't just have one colour, but a combination of different tones that depends not only upon your natural tone, but exposure to the sun and even your mood. In Alita Battle Angel, Weta Digital studied what makes our skin look and act like it does, and they managed to break it down into four categories. Displacements, dynamic changes, subsurface light, and albedo. Our faces, like any part of our bodies, aren't two-dimensional. They have depressions and elevations that are affected by light differently, and therefore alter our skin tone in that area. From a distance, you can see that the chin, nose, and cheekbones are elevated, and the eye sockets and areas around the nostrils and lower cheeks are depressions. Move in closer, and you'll notice that we have wrinkles that have their own depressions and elevations. Go even closer, and you'll see our pores, which are also depressions. The center of a pore having a darker tone, and all of them having different sizes and orientations. The orientation of the pores is vital for accuracy simulating the flow lines of our face. Instead of painting pores on the face algorithmically, which would have given a more copy and paste look, Weta used an AI programming tool that they have evolved from Massive, the crowd agent simulation tool they developed for the Lord of the Rings. This tool, as do many of Weta's proprietary tools, uses deep learning, which is basically a database full of training data. The tool then uses what it has learned learned from its training data to paint pores of the correct size and orientation that flow properly over the face. Dynamic changes are changes our skin undergoes when we use the muscles underneath it. These changes cause our forehead to wrinkle, lips to pout, cheeks to rise, and mouth to open, creating depressions and elevations on which light acts differently, and therefore the skin tone changes in that area. In order to accurately capture these dynamic changes, Weta used two cameras on actress Rosa Salazar's HMC, or Helmet Cam Unit. Not only did this enable them to capture Salazar's performance, but also depth information of what was physically happening to her face as she performed. Weta used a facial action coding system, or FAX. FAX is basically a set of different facial movements required to express any emotion. For example, a number 16 is a lower lip depressor, a number 15 is a lip corner depressor, and a number 9 is a nose wrinkler. The three combined will emote disgust. If you just try lowering your lip and wrinkling your nose, you'll now have to comment below and subscribe to our channel. However, FAX only really gave Weta information on how much muscles respond in the extreme. It didn't give them the subtle muscle movement used in speech or the micro-expressions that change with our mood or how tired we are. Weta's pipeline also uses deep learning, so in addition to all the fax poses they recorded with Salazar, they wanted additional data to add to the training data. They had Salazar deliver a set of dialogue called the Harvard Line Set. These Harvard sentences are designed for use in VOIP, cellular, and other telecommunication systems to cover the full range of phonetical arrangements in dialogue, and since the Harvard lines were designed to cover every phoneme in the English language, they can also be used to capture the full range of facial movements required to say them.
As we mentioned before, our skin isn't like the paint on our car. It's not uniform. Some areas are thicker than others, some are tougher, some areas are greasier, and others have more hair. And the light that hits these areas responds differently. Light doesn't just bounce off objects. A certain amount of light actually penetrates them and then bounces around inside it. If you shine a light or a laser at an object, you will notice that it bounces off, but you can also see a certain amount of spill around the point where the light impacts. This is called subsurface scattering, and it's different for almost every object. Recreating this subsurface scattering by simulating each individual photon would be virtually impossible. You could use an algorithm if the amount of scattering was consistent, but as we mentioned before, human skin is not at all uniform. Once again, deep learning came into play. Skin tones are made up of melanin. Lighter tones have less melanin and darker tones have more. So they found a correlation between different melanin levels and the amount of subsurface scatter and added that to their deep learning training data. Weta then used deep learning with a proprietary tool that they have for simulating subsurface scattering, a tool that has evolved from the one they pioneered with Gollum in The Lord of the Rings The Two Towers. By assigning each area a certain melanin value, the tool could then determine the amount of subsurface scatter to apply in each area in relation to its value. Albedo is the term they use for the map of the tones of your skin. Imagine your face with a neutral expression at a comfortable room temperature and with no bright lights or shadows cast on it. It wouldn't all just be one colour. Your forehead may be paler, your cheeks redder. This is your neutral albedo or tonal map. It's individual to each person and it's not a consistent. When we get angry, extra blood flows to our forehead and cheeks, making these zones redder. When we are happy, the blood flows to different areas, changing our facial tonal map depending on our mood. In Alita Battle Angel, Weta studied the actress Rosa Salazar's face and created facial tonal maps for when she was in a neutral state and for when she was angry, happy or sad. From this they then created a blood flow map so that when her emotion changed in the performance the shader could adjust her skin tone in accordance to the change in blood flow. Weta combined all this knowledge and all these techniques to create the best example of CG human skin to date. But it's still not perfect, and oddly enough, this is the main reason human skin is so hard to simulate, because it's not perfect. It's not smooth and monotone, clean and shiny. It's oily, pitted, hairy and wrinkled, and it's all these imperfections that are so difficult to perfect. We hope this video made you do a number 6 cheek razor, and number 12 lip corner puller. And if not, then please let us know in the comments which expression it left you with. And as always, you can find the links to the music used in this video in the video description.